All right, Dr. Mosa, um, we are having some technical problems with bringing you in remote. What I'd like to propose that we do, if we can, is to move on to our next panelist, if that would be all right. Um, I'm going to leave you with a panelist role in the Zoom um, while we get that settled. But uh, if that would work out okay, um, I guess, Christian, do you mind going next? Yes. All right. There you go. Thank you very much, Mark. Um, hi, everybody. Happy to be here. Thanks for inviting me um, because I'm going to come. I'm coming from a slightly different community. It's very similar. It's actually eerily similar, um, but it's a different one. And I'm going to talk to you about Odyssey. Don't say O H D S I. It's called Odyssey. Um, my name is Christian Reich. Um, I've been involved in Odyssey from the beginning, and I've been involved in OMOP, which is kind of like the predecessor uh, from the beginning. So I've been there for quite a while, which is scary. Um, and, um, and I've seen it grow, and I've seen it develop, and I've seen all the, um, the growing pains. Um, I also CEO of Odysseus Data Services in full disclosure, and I have an appointment at Northeastern University. That's the red end up, up there. So just a little bit of a um, history um, that is different from you, from your history. Um, it comes from data, uh, from uh, drug safety. So what happens is the following. FDA regulates drugs, and once the drug is on the market, Pharma companies sell the drugs unless something bad comes up. And then a so-called regulatory, regulatory action happens and the drug is either off the market or they have to put something, a warning on the package insert. And you had about, you know, oh, I can't use this. Uh, it doesn't work that way. Um, you had about, you know, over the decades, one per year, give or take. Okay, and then at the 2000s, it spiked, a lot more happened, and it culminated in the Vioxx scandal, and um, the Vioxx scandal was a, um, a drug, very successful drug, painkiller for osteoarthritis, and uh, turned out it was uh, causing cardiovascular problems and heart attacks, and people died from taking the drug. And so scandal broke loose, and there was actually there was like 30, 40,000 deaths uh, per year because of the drug. So um, Congress, US Congress, did a, a, a hearing and invited the FDA and said, FDA, well, aren't you checking these drugs? And they said, oh, yeah, we are. And, you know, the clinical trials, making sure they're safe. And so what happened? Well, they said the trials are too short and they are too small. They are too small to see things which have already a high background rate, so you don't see the difference. And they are too short because it takes time for some of that stuff to, have, to develop. What do we do? Well, we have to check the drugs when they are on the market, okay, and study them and see how they are doing and whether they are bad effects. And Congress did what it should do when it's working well, passed a law, the federal, the FDA Amendment Act of 2007. And the, um, in, that drug, in that law, it said you will, not, not FDA, they, they only talk to the um, Secretary of Health and Human Services, will have a system um, that is a drug surveillance system, drug, well, no, I lost my, here. Um, risk identification analysis system. And it's actually funny, if you read the text of the law, it's like a project plan. By 2000, by July 1, 2010, you're going to have 25 million patients in that system. And by July 1, 2012, you're going to have 100,000 patient in the system. Okay, so I actually literally prescribed exactly what has to happen. That thing became sentinel. Law was passed, um, public was happy, FDA was happy, pharma industry was unhappy, very 
unhappy because they know clinical trials, they don't know how this stuff, how, how is that gonna work? Who's gonna, where's the data coming from? How many patients do we, we need? How many patients do we have the data from? 100 million? A clinical trial is, well, if it's a thousand, it's already huge, okay? And where are they coming from? Who's gonna submit? Who's gonna analyze? What analysis? What type of data? EHR data, claims data. So went to the pharma, the trade organization, went to the government and said, we need to talk and we need to define how this works so we can actually uh, do this or whatever is required of us and prepare for this. They did. That is the birth of OMOP. And if you give a committee a task to name something, then you end up with a word like OMOP, Observational Medical Outcomes Partnership. And that partnership, um, and that, that term stuck. And now nobody knows what OMOP actually means, and it turned also into a verb. Have you OMOPed your data already? Um, and so, um, so somehow these words have them their own life. So what happened is they met for about, for about a year in uh, individual committees and tried to decide this and couldn't come up with a solution. They couldn't agree. They couldn't agree whether they were arguing over, can you trust EHR because, you know, the docs, they, they make a mistake and there's no quality. And can you trust claims? Well, you know, they're over coding all the time to make more money. How, uh, uh. So um, then the idea was born that if we don't know how to do this, we're gonna do an experiment, an empirical experiment, trying the things out that are being debated and the ones that uh, work um, will prevail and that's what we're gonna do. And so the experiment was, well, let's take a bunch of databases the ones which we argue about, and a whole lot of different methods, and apply these methods, they're all public domain, the scientific community, and see whether we can reproduce a grid of 10 drugs and 10 outcomes which we know exist, because they're all drugs. So the method and the database that can find this grid, so red means, you know, um, ACE inhibitors cause angioedema, red, Amphotericine B does not cause angioedema blue. Okay, white is we don't know, green is it's a positive effect. This is the truth. And let's see who wins, and that's what we're going to do. And so that was the, the OMAP experiment. And there was another experiment because it turns out that you, it's statistically not uh, satisfactory because you have only one in each cell, you have only one pair. So then they said, hell, we need more. And we said, um, do you understand what we are doing here? We are having 10 databases. These are 14 different SAS scripts with all the different parameterizations. It's 1,000 scripts times 10 by 10. So it's 10 by 10 by 1,000 by 10. It's 1 million little mini pharmacoepi studies. Okay? Absolutely crazy. And you want us to do now 10 or 100 times as much? Didn't work. So what, what happened is the amount of uh, outcomes were reduced and the, and the drugs were uh, put into classes and increased. And there was a second experiment. Doesn't matter, it's all detail, it's all online, you can, uh, you can see that. Essentially what found out is that, well, it's not that simple. And um, there's heterogeneity in the databases and that's big time. You can have an effect in one database and no effect on another. And there's heterogeneity to the analysis choices. You know, you use one time at risk and you know another time at risk and you get opposite results. And um, there's not much in the, actually in the core definitions, even though people put a lot of effort into getting it right and not to miss a single misclassify and validation studies. Actually, it doesn't actually matter. Um, the result of the, of these uh, estimations are similar. Self-controlled works slightly better than uh, comparison uh, cohort, but that was that was the result back then. Of course, that uh, has changed or has moved on over time. So what happened is, pharma pharma industry said, "Oh, good, good, good. Okay, this is only an area under the curve of 0.7 of discrimination of yes effect, no effect, meaning." 
if it's perfect, a method that's perfect gets an a AUC of one. A method that is guessing wildly, tossing a coin, gets an AUC of 0.5. 0.7 is okay, you know, they, they, it can do something. It's not evidence. We we'll need to run studies. We're good. We know what we're doing. Everybody's happy. And of course, the academics were very furious and saying, oh, what the hell? You come in here, a bunch of kids, IT people, and tell us how we do our work. Okay? You're out of your mind. And um, uh, we could have told you that this is not working like what, the way you do it. So that's what happened. Um, OMOP ended on, on that um, because that was the purpose of the program. It was funded for doing that and it was delivered. And then what happened is that the OMOP investigators, so one of these little guys is me, um, said, this is crazy. We have a perfect experimental assay. We have, oh, I need to speed up. We have um, a, te in, in a test and we have the result and the test isn't working well. Now we, the work starts, we need to debug, okay? We need to figure this out. We can't just say, well, 0.7, that's it. Um, Odyssey was born, OHDSI. The reason is OHDSI, it was supposed to be Odyssey, but you can't get the um, domain name Odyssey unless you're paying a lot of money to some squatter. So OHDSI, which stands for Observational Health Data Science and Informatics. Forget, nobody knows what it actually stands for. It doesn't matter. It's like OMOP, it became a word. And, you know, um, Odyssey started, again, open, but the difference is to OMOP is not just US, the world, the whole world has the same problem. Um, not funded by pharma, because if you have a pharma funded project, people say, oh, you found out it doesn't work well to test the drugs for side effects, oh, sure, okay. Um, and um, essentially make it a large open source project out of it. Very scary, now we are here. We have like conquered the world. Um, and you know those kind of pictures as well. You have very similar pictures. I don't have to explain that. Um, it is, um, it's very open sourcey, so you don't actually have to do anything. You don't have to sign up or anything like this. Uh, you just declare yourself and then you're in, in Odyssey. And then there's a symposium every year. And it looks like this. And so then, um, the, one of the secret sources is how the standardization works. Again, you know this, I'm just showing it to you the way we're talking about it. You have a question, it's like an appliance, and the, the appliance has to be stuck into data, and of course data looks like this. And you know, we're using this metaphor because um, if there is a standard, then you only realize the, the value of a standard when actually you are in the Apple, and you, you realize you forgot the stupid adapter and you have to pay one in the overpriced shop in the airport um, when you're flying internationally. And then, you know, you have, why couldn't everybody be on the same standard? And so what do I, does um, traditionally everybody do? They wire things up. A SAS script, an R script, they're a little more modern. This is what it looks like. You have lots of scripts, very intransparent. And of course, this is what we need. So we talk, we call this the OMOP CDM, and this the Odyssey tools, again, same world. And of course, you can have lots of different tools, and you can have a little market. And once you do, and they can do different things, the tools, and once you do this, you can be far away, you know that too, and data can be behind a firewall. And then you can have a network. Somewhat that is slightly different, or it's not different. It's the same what you are doing, except the vocabularies are strict. This is the only, it's kind of like an act, okay? Even stricter than act. The, con the uh, concept file, concept dimension it's called? Concept dimension? What's it called? Um, in OMOP, it's called concept, is passed out by the center and everybody has to use the same one. Everybody has to use the same one. Everybody has to call COVID vaccine, you know, Moderna, the same. Everybody has to call COVID 
the same. You can't pick up, oh, maybe I do it, I see a 10, I do I see nine. One way of doing everything. And it is, it's the only thing which Odyssey really centrally, apart from organizing the whole thing and having symposia, um, has an explicit activity, which is keeping these vocabulary system, including the hierarchies, maintained because it's mandatory for everybody. And the reason is, just imagine some poor ETL or analyst wretch in Australia has to dig through CPT4. Like, you know, where do I find, you know, I don't know, a stent in plant in, in, in installation, okay? Um, a, a, it's, it's, it's horrible. And you need to know that CPT does all sorts of different things and sometimes it's not actually a procedure, it's just a justification for money. Impossible. So what Odyssey does is saying, nope, we are draconically defining this for you and you all have to speak the same language. You don't like the language, go to the um, work group, supply, make a case for your change. If it changes, it changes for everybody. That is the reason why it, it still isn't perfect, but why the, the uh, federated model works very well, even in far, far away countries who have a completely different healthcare system and completely different coding system, and they don't speak English, and you, know, you can't even read the, the letters. Well, I can't, some people of course can. Uh, in China or in Japan or so, you know, it's completely off um, if, you do, if you go there. And um, that's probably, I would say, the main, it's not even a difference, it's just a degree of, uh, of enforcement. Um, of what has how the standard has to be done, um, so you can really truly blindly, still not perfect, but much more uh, blindly um, define your cohorts, your phenotypes, and your studies, and pass them out and run them and let them and let people use it. I think it's you know the the uh, various uh, institutions uh, have a high adoption. You have those pictures. You know, when people are saying, well, you know, I don't, I, uh, I don't know, should I, should I participate, should I not participate, okay? It's an investment in the future, okay? When the highway was built, it looked like this. You have to start now in order to be, um, you know, at full swing at some point. And, yeah, we already, I think we're already there. It looks already like this, um, but we know where we're going, okay? So I invite everybody that Odyssey Symposium is on October 20th, 22nd, 20th, uh, 20th, 21st, 22nd. The main one is on 22nd, New Brunswick, New Jersey. Um, you can just sign up and come and get, you know, get another impression of how a network like this could work. Thank you very much.